Hello, my name is Starla Henderson with Fronter House Quilts, and today I'm going to show you how I make my stems. Um, I really love, let me find it here, a tool that is made by Clover. It is one of my favorite, my favorite way to make a bias tape or stem. And it's, this one is the quarter inch one, and that's what we're going to be using today. They have several sizes. I have a few of them. But this is a number six. And I really like this, this brand the best because so I've had the best luck with it. I, I hardly ever have problems when I'm doing, using this particular tool. But you first have to start with a bias strip. For a quarter inch, you basically are going to double the size. So you're going to need half inch bias strips. And the way to go about getting something on the bias, which means instead of going with the grain, you're going at an angle, kind of across the grain. And that's going to give it stretch. So, what you do is, I usually start with a 10 inch square, because like what I'm working on right now that I'm cutting this for is a big quilt, and I'm going to need a lot of bias, bias uh, stems. So I'm just I start with a 10 inch square. It's small enough that my ruler can go across on the diagonal. So you're going to cut a square and then you're going to cut from corner to opposite corner. You're going to cut it on the diagonal. And I just can't get far enough away for you to see that very easily, but I will try here. But you can see that I'm starting in one corner and it's going to go to the next corner. And that is how you cut this. So I start by making that first cut after I've got my square. And you can start with any size square. This is just a comfortable size because most of my pieces for this are not going to be whoops, any longer. Be careful that your ruler doesn't slip. After you get it cut on that diagonal, then I very carefully, you're working with bias edges, so they will stretch. I carefully fold my piece over and I line up my edges, which is not hard to do. And then I'm going to turn my board so I don't have to pick those up. And now I'm going to cut half inch strips. And I'm cutting two at a time because I've doubled this. And you're just going to line your ruler up on a half inch line and very carefully make a cut. And then you're going to cut this all the way down until you get small enough that you don't want to use one some that short. But you'd be surprised what you can do with a short piece. So, Okay, now I've got those cut. I'm going to carefully move this over. I'll finish cutting those later for some more. Separate one out. Now I'm going to go to the pressing portion. You want to get your iron hot and I lay my piece out like this and I start with a pin in the end. Now I am right handed so I'm going to be working from right to left. If you're left handed you just do it in the opposite direction. And I also kind of like this board that I've got that's got straight lines on it. It just kind of keeps me from going in a curve and pressing a curve into this that I don't want. So I'm going to spray this whole length, which is actually about 15 inches because I was going, you know, from corner to corner. And I'm going to put this right side on the bottom. So your wrong side is going to be facing where your the bottom. This is the wrong side, and it's going to go towards the what is the actual top of your make your tape maker. And you can get these at quilt stores and other fabric places or you can order them online. Now I get in, in like this and it may be hard to see but here's the fabric and it's hard to catch so I just take a pin and kind of pull it through. And sometimes it doesn't come through the way you want so I pull it back and I do it again. Once I see a little piece come out, there we go. Now, 
you can see it automatically folds this into this quarter inch. And then, so that you can see it, I'm going to put this a little differently. I like to have my pin where I can um, put a little tension, so I pin it at the other end. And I've just got a barely little bit here sticking out. So you can take your iron and be careful. Anytime you use an iron, you have to be very careful. And you're going to start. And what you're doing is you're drawing this starch that you put on here. Very slowly you pull it back. And as you do, there's this little, little line in the very center of this. And I just make sure that I can see the folds of my uh, bias tape here right with that line. I'm going to lift it up and you can see that. And we'll pull this a little bit further. I'm working in a little more limited space because of filming. Normally I have this all stretched out across my whole board. So I'm going to keep right on going. I lay my iron down first because you have to have a little tension and then after I pull I press. You're going to pull and press just very slowly. This isn't hard but it is delicate. Now, I can see my tape on the other side of my iron. So I'm going to put another pin and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to go ahead and reposition a little bit. And I'm going to pin it down here where I've already pressed. Again, that just provides me with a little bit of tension, which helps this to just work better. And I'm just going to keep right on going all the way down this whole length of this. This is how I make my quarter inch pieces. And as soon as I get this done, I'm going to I'm going to move it again just because it's a little better for me to the way I'm sitting. And sometimes you have to kind of mess with your with it because it's it stops wanting to be right in the center where you want it to be. So I move it around a little bit till I get it back where I want it. And this takes a little bit of practice, but honestly, this is the easiest way I have come I have found for making a bias stem, for making my stems doing a bias. I'm going to keep right on going. Almost done. Yeah. And I really like it because unlike the bars and other methods that I've used, this is a very flat piece. And to me that just looks neater. It's very neat. And if you get this very wet, which sometimes I do on accident, it will steam on you, so be careful as you're ironing. You might steam yourself. All right, now, that's a quarter inch. I mean, just look at that. Now, if I want a piece, and I'm going to get one that I've already got done that's a little shorter to do this with, that say I want an eighth of an inch, just before I lay it down, and they're usually shorter pieces. Let me find a short one here. There's one. No, it's not. Ah. Okay. I will take I'll take a quarter inch that I've just done. And the part that where the the raw edges where you can see them, not the right side, but the wrong side. I will just take it and go ahead and fold it over like this and very carefully, a little bit at a time, I press it again and just put a crease right down the center, just folding it in half. And it never starts off quite right. It's a little hard because you're at the very end. So I start it there and I move it down. And I just keep pressing. Don't hold it too long on there. You'll scorch your fabric, which I did the other day. Oops. But I will go ahead and do that and just 
keep right on working it down until I get this quarter inch, I mean this eighth of an inch piece that I then can lay down for much tinier stems. And that's about as tiny as I've been able to go. But I like that for some things instead of embroidery. There are sometimes I, I want to keep the exact same um, the fabric instead of doing an embroidery stitch and that's or I may just want a really tiny stem but this is how I get an eighth of an inch and then you just lay it down like you would any and and you just applique it down. This is Starla Henderson with Fronter House Quilts and this is how I make my stems. Thank you for joining me. Please look me up on Facebook and on my YouTube channel.